Results are coming in and all eight amendments to the Texas Constitution are expected to pass tonight. Texas lawmakers approved those measures during the regular session and two of them stem from issues Texans faced during the COVID pandemic. KXAN's Monica Madden joins us with more on what the changes will mean. Well, it's not a surprise that all eight of the proposed constitutional amendment changes are on track to pass. That's because historically Texans have approved constitutional amendment changes on ballots in the past. They require two thirds vote in both houses to even get on the ballot. So it really has to be bipartisan. Republican Representative James Frank authored one of the propositions. He says he was expecting swift approval of Prop 6 since it had virtually unanimous support in the legislature. Prop 6 is one of two amendment changes born out of the pandemic, allowing long term care facilities to pick a single designated essential caregiver who must always be allowed in person visitation. We heard countless, countless stories of people they were literally trapped in nursing homes by themselves without being able to see loved ones for months and months on end. The other one, Proposition 3, prevents state and local governments from ever halting or limiting religious services in houses of worship again. Quality of life is more than just living and staying alive. When you stop people from living, that has a cost of its own. Honestly, freedom of religion is something that really this country was founded on. Critics, however, worry officials might need the ability to issue similar restrictions to protect Texans in future emergencies. If a fire marshal orders a number of people to leave a church building because it is currently over full, that is not an infringement of anyone's right to exercise their religion. Other measures Texans weighed in on included some judicial changes pertaining to the qualifications for judges and judicial oversight. And two more addressed some expanded tax exemptions for spouses of military members killed or injured while serving, as well as surviving spouses of people with disabilities. And we'll be bringing you live updates as those results trickle in. You can find that on our website at the Capitol. Monica Madden, back to you.